200, 300, 400, 500. Oh, hello guys. Sorry, I didn't see you guys there. I was too busy counting all the money that I've been leaving on the table for not doing my email marketing soon enough. I don't know about you guys, but as soon as I hear the word email marketing, I just think of spam which is ugh, nasty. It's just sitting there clogging up my email inbox. That's probably why I ignored it for so long, but I'm happy I stopped because now I have all this sweet extra cash laying around. Okay, all jokes aside, I decided to dive straight into it. And once I did, my business exploded. I started seeing results almost right away, which blew my mind. And the coolest part is I figured out how to get a 58% email open rate as a beginner just by testing it out, sending out thousands of emails over the past year. Yes, you heard that right. 58% email open rate. Now I know you're probably thinking, well, Andy, the industry average email open rate is only 21%. How on earth did you get 58%? It was actually very simple and anybody can do it from the very first email that they send out. But first, let's think about this. Why does a high open rate even matter? Well, you you can reach more consumers, which means more sales for you. So stop ignoring it like I was for all of these years and just start doing it. I promise it's not as scary as you think. And once you set up your first template, which I'm going to show you later in the video, you're going to be off to an amazing start. I created a system which basically has five steps to it that gets me a 58% email open rate. My system is so simple that you're going to wish that you started years ago. Make sure to watch all the way through though. It wasn't just one strategy that got me a 58% open rate. It was a a combination of everything that had me crushing the industry standard. So let's dive right in. The very first step to my system is stay top of mind. This is the difference that's going to separate your email marketing from all the spam out there. So that's why the goal of your email marketing, at least in the beginning, should not be to sell anything at all. You're basically using email marketing just to stay in contact with your audience. I'm going to prove my point later in the video because I went against that and actually tried to sell something to my audience and my open rate plummeted. So instead of sending out like say, salesy emails, just use it as a way to stay in touch with all of your audience. That's what's going to separate email marketing from actual spam and how I got such a tremendously high open rate. We all get the same emails all the time. It says, oh, you just won a free Apple AirPods. Click over here. And obviously we're not clicking over there. We're sending it right into our spam folder. So don't spam your audience with emails that have an agenda like that. You just want to let your audience know that you still exist. Like, hello, I'm right over here, guys. Don't forget about me. You don't even want to know how many times I've heard from friends that lost a deal or lost a customer because they forgot they even existed. So I was talking to one of my real estate buddies and he said that he was using email marketing towards the end of the year and he hadn't done it up until this point. He started using it to stay in touch with his old clients for his deals that he was working on. He said about an hour after he sent out his first email, one of his old clients reached out to him and said, oh my God, I didn't even know that you were still doing real estate. If I had known, I wouldn't have just bought a house with another agent. My my poor buddy lost a $40,000 commission check just because he didn't stay top of mind with his old clients. So I bet you're wondering, Andy, how do we stay top of mind with our clients without having an agenda? Well, I'm very glad you asked that question. So instead of trying to sell something to your audience, provide value to them instead, which leads me into tip number two provide value. Providing value is critical to getting a very high open rate and not having people just instantly delete them or ignore your emails. Think about it like this. Guys, if you're getting a 50% email open rate, that means one out of every two people are clicking on your emails. That's a crazy amount of potential business that you're going to be either A, losing if you're not sending out emails now or B, not actually sending them out the correct way. So let's talk about value for a second and what that actually means for an email. So instead Instead of saying, I have blah, 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 blah to sell you, actually give them some kind of advice or a tip or something cool to do. Okay, look at this. I'm going to load up my constant contact and show you guys some of my emails that I've been sending out providing value to my audience. All right, guys. So this is my actual constant contact email campaign right here. If you can actually tell, it says week seven, how to increase your credit. So after clicking on it, as you can see over here, look, a 57.6%, I'm rounding up. So 58% open rate. And then if I go and click on the details over here, you can actually see the email that I sent out. So at the very top, I just put my logo on there, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. And then you're going to see ways to increase your credit. So I'm instantly providing value to them. I'm not asking for anything at all. I'm actually teaching them something that can help them in their life. And let me tell you, this has absolutely nothing to do with my business at all. I'm a real estate agent and I do not work with credit. So I just came up with something creative to give them valuable life tips. So you can see as I'm scrolling through the email over here, it's very short and sweet. 
check your credit report, pay your bills on time, avoid opening new credit accounts, et cetera, et cetera. Guys, that's it. I just provided a little bit of value to them and then they clicked on my email. Okay, let me show you guys another one. Okay, so right over here, it says week number five, top 10 best restaurants in South Florida. Now, again, all I'm doing is providing value to them without actually trying to sell them something. And as you can see over here, I have a 50% open rate. So if I go and click on it over here, you can see it, top 10 best restaurants in South Florida. And all I do is basically just list all of the restaurants that are really, really good in my South Florida area. So if any of my audience clicks on this and they find a restaurant that they enjoy, they're instantly going to associate that with me and then think of me. So then when they want to use me for business again, they're going to call me because I just sent them the top 10 restaurants in South Florida and they used it. That's the exact definition of providing value. So what I did was I came up with a list list of a whole bunch of value add emails and then I'm using that for my campaigns. You could really think of anything that you want to use for this. Like you could do top 10 beaches, you can do a top 10 restaurants like I did before. You don't have to do the top 10 thing but I just find that that's very helpful in coming up with ideas but get creative with this and think outside the box. Now yes, providing value is a big reason why I get such a high open rate but it's not the only thing. Because without tip number three, this whole thing would fall apart and I'd be back to getting a 21% email open rate like every other average Joe out there. Which brings me into tip number three, segment your email list. By segmenting your email list into different categories, you can actually address each person's concerns individually. You guys know that all customers aren't the same. So why would you treat them all the same via email? Now I'm sure you're probably wondering, Andy, how important is segmentation? Well, one study that I read said that it actually increased revenue by 760%. I think I can speak for everyone when I say, God damn, that's a lot of extra revenue. So the next thing on your mind is how do you build a segmented list? And and I'm gonna tell you right now. So a lot of this is gonna to have to do with how you gather the emails. So as you're adding your contacts to your database and segmenting your list, put them in different buckets based on what they're interested in and how you met them. I'm gonna go into my constant contact right now and show you guys exactly what I mean by that from a real estate perspective. All right guys, so I just pulled up my email list over here and as you can see on the screen, I have about 18,000 contacts, which I'm gonna talk about in a little bit how I got so many because it only took me a few years to get that database built up. So as I scroll down, you can see I've segmented out a bunch of different categories. I'm gonna go through the first one. One is an EXP holiday party list. So basically that's just all the guests that attended my holiday party whose emails that I got. So I'm gonna be doing different email marketing to them compared to let's say my Gmail list, which is just a combination of all the emails that I found in my Gmail. And that's gonna be even different from let's say my MLS list, which as a realtor, we have something called the MLS, which basically sends listings to all the clients that you're working with. And in the MLS list over here, I'm gonna send very specific emails to those kind of clients because I know that they're looking for homes. And then I have a Rich With Rentals list, which is my coaching program that I offer, and I segmented those into different emails as well. Now, if I was just sending the same email to every single person in this list, my email open rate would plummet because all of these people in these different categories have different interests. So that's one thing that you do not wanna do is just have one massive list and then just send out a generic email to everybody on that list. Just take the time and segment out the list just do it once and then this way, every time you get new contacts, you can put them in the appropriate category. And once you do that, you're ready to start sending out your emails. Okay guys, and before I go into tip number four, I just wanted to let you know that if you like what you're seeing on Constant Contact right now, you can actually sign up using my referral code below. I'm gonna drop it in the description and you can get 30% off your first three months. Plus you can get access to all of my templates, which I'm gonna show you later in the video. Okay, so on to step number four, which is gonna be the frequency of your emails. Because you might be thinking to yourself, now that you learned all these amazing tips, now you're ready to just blast out emails. Wrong! You cannot do that and if you do, you're gonna have a very, very low open rate. You do not want to send out too many emails too fast, otherwise all these tips that I just showed you before are gonna be in vain. They're not gonna work. Remember how I said before that all these tips actually work together? It's like if you're trying to bake a nice warm loaf of bread. Let's just say that you forget to add the yeast. Yeah, you might have had the other ingredients right, but with 
without the yeast, the bread's not going to rise. And you're going to be left with a damp, sloppy, floppy, flat piece of bread that's unappealing and not edible. So mess up just one thing and the entire result is going to be ruined. That's why you don't want to send out too many emails too fast. Otherwise, you're going to be very disappointed with the results. And you might be sitting there thinking, Andy, how do you know that? Well, let me tell you how I know that because I actually tested it. I started sending out multiple emails per week and my results bombed. My open rate went from that amazing 50% plus all the way down to like 23%. If you send out too many emails too fast, it's gonna totally destroy your progress. And your email open rate is gonna be abysmal just like the industry standard, which is like 21%. So the answer to step number four is only send out one email per week. That's the frequency that you actually want. Doing that has led to a consistent 50% open rate for my audience. Okay, so guys, look at this. I'm gonna show you on my screen right now April 19th, I had a 52% open rate. I sent out an email a week later on the 26th, 55% open rate. I sent out an email a week after that, 51% open rate. And then actually it took me a little bit longer for this one, but then look, I got a 50% open rate on May 10th. Guys, look at this. And then even on May 17th, that's when I had a 58% open rate. I waited even longer at that point and it actually works better. Now, if you're wondering what time you should send out the emails, it doesn't really matter that much as long as you're not doing it at like midnight or like four in the morning. I typically like to send my emails out around 10 a.m. or 12 p.m. or like 5 p.m. Those are the times I typically choose. What really matters is clicking that button that says send reminder email when you send out the first email. So that's basically gonna allow you to schedule a reminder email that basically automatically follows up with the first email that you sent. Okay, so guys, I'm gonna pull up my screen over here again and you can see it where it says resend to non-openers. So you click on that button over there. This is if you're using Constant Contact. If you're using another platform, then I'm sure they have a very similar kind of strategy. And then just make sure you set the scheduled resend date to about two to four days after your initial email. And that's it. All you do is hit confirm and you're good to go. The reason why you don't wanna send out too many emails too fast is they lose their authenticity. Your emails don't feel special anymore and it's just another piece of junk mail that they're gonna to send to spam or delete. So practice patience here and care carefully craft out your emails with thought and purpose. Which brings me right into tip number five, which is personalize your emails. Creating emails that are tailored exclusively to your audience is gonna actually have them opening them up and coming back for more. So for this part in the video, I'm gonna go over all of the formatting for the emails, like the copy, the subject line, and the templates. Because what you actually put in the email, like the body of the email, makes a big difference. Studies have even shown that if you put their first name in the opening, like the greeting of the email, it has an 18% more effective rate. Something along the lines of like, hey Joe, how you doing? Or hey Mary, I missed you. Something like that will give it a more personal touch and you could actually code this into your emails quite easily. Even doing a personalized recommendation in the subject line can also increase the open rate as well. I read an article from Amazon that said that if they send out a follow-up email that there's items still left in their Amazon cart, it can increase their sales by up to 14% because the subject lines are so incredibly important. That's the only thing that they're actually gonna read to determine if they're gonna click on your email or delete it or ignore it. There are trillions of subject lines that you guys can use. I like to think of them as using urgency, curiosity, or even vanity. Those help a lot in getting people to click on your actual emails. Just get creative, think outside the box, and be different from everything else that you see. If you separate yourself from all the other thousands of emails that are getting sent out every day, people will click I promise you. Now let's talk about the actual layout of the emails, meaning the copy that you use, which is basically just the text that you're gonna be writing, and the templates. Now guys, there are thousands or millions or probably billions of templates out there that you guys can copy and paste, but you want to create your own so it differentiates yourself and makes it more personal to your audience. I know it can be very, very tempting to cram a ton and make it really cluttered looking, but do not do that. Make it very short and simple and sweet and right to the point. The very best emails have one clear message that it's delivering to the subscriber. I like to use very colorful and basic and this right to the point email. So I'm gonna pull it up right now and show you guys one of my examples of my templates. Okay, so on my screen here, you can see it, which is a email I sent out, tips on how to buy your first home, you can see I have a 52% open rate, which is very, very good. And if I click on the actual email itself, you can see over here, I have it very short and sweet. 
I just have right for the headline tips on how to buy your first home, a picture of a house, and then just a quick little rundown of how to buy the home. Determine your budget, get pre-approved, choose the right location, work with an agent, make a list of must haves. That's basically it guys. I mean, look, it's very, very short and sweet and right to the point. There's not much going on. I don't have blocks of text. I don't have endless graphics going on. It's very succinct and it's in order of A to Z on how to buy a home. Now, obviously you guys aren't real estate agents, but just use this same kind of format for your emails. Okay, and then as you can see on my screen, here's another one. I just did best schools in Florida and I just have a little bit of text in the beginning and then I just scroll down and basically just list all the good schools in order and let's have a little blurb of text right next to each graphic you can see it's not too chaotic it's not too hectic not that much going on and then I just end out the email with a signature greeting saying goodbye so you guys can see in all of my emails that I'm showing you I'm just providing value and I'm making it very, very short and sweet and simple for them to read. That's how I'm consistently getting over a 50% email open rate. But I actually wanna throw in a bonus tip for all you guys that continue to watch to this point. So the bonus tip is gonna be to clean up your email list. So you do not want Google or whatever provider that is getting your emails to send them to the spam folder. That is like the kiss of death for email marketing. So the best way to prevent that from happening as long as you follow my steps one through steps five is to tidy up your email list. So after every couple emails, I send, I like to go into the email campaigns and I'm actually going to find out which ones bounced and which ones say blocked. If they say either of those things, I'm going to delete them from my contact list because it actually gives the wrong message to the email provider and thinks that you're like a spam robot or something. The more emails that actually get delivered, the higher the chance you have of not getting sent to that spam folder. Also, anybody that hasn't read your emails in like 90 days, yeah, you know, those people that just ignore you, yeah, you should probably ignore them too by deleting them off your email list. Right before you do, you can send them a re-engagement email, literally just reminding them that, hey, I'm here. You know, it's not providing value or anything like that. It's just saying, hey, do you still wanna be a part of my email list? And typically studies have shown that that actually increases the chance of them reopening your emails by 25%. But those other 75%, just face it, they're never coming back. Sometimes people just lose interest in what you're offering, or maybe that they're annoyed by your brand and and they just don't want to see your face anymore. I know, it sucks hearing that, but don't worry because you don't want to focus on those people. You want to focus on getting new clients and building a bigger database and a bigger email list. And don't forget to keep the customers that do open your emails happy by following all of my steps. As long as you do, you guys are gonna be on your way to a 50% plus email open rate and you're gonna be making way more money in your business. The only thing I regret about email marketing is I didn't do it sooner. All right guys, that's all I got for you today. It would be really nice if you guys can hit the subscribe button. If you like videos like this, I'm gonna keep making them, but I want people to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. It's really, really lonely down there. You know, it's that little button that has that thumbs up. So if you guys could do me a big favor and just click that and click subscribe, I would love all of you. If not, no big deal. Just keep watching my videos and I hope you guys have an amazing day. All right, that's it. That's all I got for today. That was pretty good. Not bad.